All right, hi, family. Hi, hi John. We are a family, whether you like it or not. <laughs> and you know what? Just like, uh, you know, I come in and I hear things, and that's okay, because you know what? We have biological families, too, right? And we don't always get along with them, either. Right? So, our Christian family, you know, things go, don't always go well. Things don't always go our way. We don't always get what we want. But one thing's for sure, the Bible tells us, we get everything we need. Yes. Amen. All our needs are met. Mm -hmm. Not our greeds and not our selfish ways and our flesh. Mm -hmm. Our needs are met. Amen. Nobody looks like they're starving here. Yeah. Everybody has clothes on their back here. Yeah. God is sustaining each and every one of us. Yeah. Yes, He is. And He tells us, put aside your ways and adopt my ways, because you are my children of the light. Amen? Amen? This Bible study is called Coming Out of the Dark. If you've been under this ministry for any length of time, you know you have a lot of light from God's Word. Now, just because you have light going into your head doesn't mean it's going to come out and show mm -hmm. in your life. You can gain a lot of knowledge. But true Christian maturity is showing that knowledge with the heart of love and kindness and grace. We know for, remember, you know, the Bible, I was reading in my daily walk, it says repetition <laughs> is the key to retention. Repetition is the key to retention. Now, if I called everybody to talk about 1 Corinthians 13, we might not be able to recite it perfectly, but we know pretty much what it says. Because what? We repeated it, and repeated it, and repeated it, till it got driven in my head. Like, I come from an old background of different religion. And I still remember all the creeds, because they kept telling me every time I went, ba 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 ba, -ba. I, could, I still can quote them. So we understand that repetition is the key to retention. So that's why you're going to hear things time and time again. Because our spirit gets fed, but our flesh also gets fed out there. Yeah. And we come in here, and we got to get our spirits fed because our flesh is strong. Right. It says, Jesus says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, Jesus would not say that if he didn't know the human spirit. We have this flesh, okay? Just because we have a knowledge about the Bible doesn't mean that our flesh is crucified. And I'll tell you what, God has, has been crucifying my flesh everywhere I go. <laughs> the more I grow, the more my flesh has to die. And the more I grow, the more I know that God doesn't want me to act that way. So once the light gets turned on, especially the people that come here, that know all the truth of God's word, it's like, eh, it's like a, a conviction buzzer. It's like, what am I doing? I claim I love Jesus. I claim I love the Lord. I claim I walk with the Lord. But I'm walking in my flesh and I'm talking in my flesh all the time. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, when you don't do the things that I say? And when things get, you know, you know that saying, when, the, when things get tough, the tough get going? Yeah. It seems like the Christian life, when things get tough, we walk away. Instead, we get going. How many times do I have to say that things are going to get tough for us? The more we mature, the tougher it gets. Why? Because our flesh has to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't want to. It goes up and jumps off. It goes up and jumps off. It doesn't want to die. So why do we have to keep repeating that? Because. Just look at your life. Look in the mirror. Say, am I still in my flesh at times. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a daily dependence on God, a daily dependence on the Word of God, and a daily dependence on Jesus. 
Thank God we have the Trinity, right? Mm -hmm. God the Father, always watching over us. Right? Amen. God the Holy Spirit, which is inside us, giving us that moral conviction that we know things aren't quite right and we're not acting the way God would like us as His children. And we have Jesus to walk alongside of us as our advocate. Thank you. Jesus is our defense attorney. Pleading our case before the Father. Father, you know them. Amen. They're weak. They're fragile. Amen. Please, help them. Help us. Jesus is always on our side. Mm -hmm. Jesus never fights against us. We, forget, we fight against him. He's always working in our defense. Can you get an amen for that? Amen. Well, I don't care what you're going through. It's a good thing that you're going through it because you know what? God is molding and shaping you. Gee, God said, I'm the potter, you're the clay. You know, the, the potter, he's got the clay in his hands and now it doesn't always come out right, right? <laughs> Start over. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the way our flesh goes. All right, I have something to read. Go to Philippians chapter 1. Okay? Because at the moment we get saved, God begins to work in our lives. Okay? You know, if, if anybody's been reading the Daily Walk, yeah. mm -hmm. it's talking about God's chosen people, how He delivered them, mm -hmm. how He provided for them, and like two or three days without anything. Oh, it was better to be a slave than to have to go through all this stuff. Yeah. The same with our Christian walk. Oh, I'm not feeling God today. Where is he? I don't sense him anywhere. Well, it's a faith walk. That's why you don't sense him. Does that mean he's not there? No. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's when you have to bank on the promises. God's testing our faith daily. And how many times do we fail? Daily. That's okay. Thank God we ain't back in them times. Yep. Yep. Because they didn't get away what we get away with. Yep. Kids start disobeying their parents, they threw them outside and stoned them to death. Yep. Somebody got caught in adultery, they stoned them. They didn't put up with any of that. Murder, dead. Right? Immorality, dead. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Amen. God said, they take something from you, you take it from them. It ain't like that anymore, though. That's just how we have to understand God's character. We ain't operating in the Old Testament. We are in the New Covenant. Be careful when you go read in the Old Testament, because you can become Pharisaical because of it. Don't let it do that to you. It's a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. the, it, the, it, this is just telling us how it used to be and the spiritual principles are there that murder and all that stuff kills us mm -hmm. it kills us spiritually mm -hmm. so we can't get the literal meaning of the Old Testament and take it into the New Testament and start bashing our brothers and sisters and you should be doing this and you should be doing that that's exactly what the Pharisees did mm -hmm. when God gave them the Sabbath to rest they said, oh, they told Jesus, you can't heal on the Sabbath. That's how crazy and carried away we get with it. Jesus says, if your donkey falls in the ditch on the Sabbath, do you let him die there or do you go get him? The Pharisees were good at telling people what to do, but they did the same thing themselves. We can get caught up in that in the Old Testament. We have to be very careful when we read that. We have to read it with spiritual eyes. We're born again. And not get so rigid and harsh because you get in here and you start reading Genesis. And, wow, yeah. God's no joke. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, right. And I'm no judge. He's the judge. Right. Amen, man. Don't you go start judging people Amen. because you're reading the Old Testament because that's what they did. No, that's right. Judge not and not be judged. Okay, right. just a little tidbit so we don't get wrapped up in that because I know we can get literally wrapped up in the Old Testament and miss the spiritual meaning to it all. Mm. Alright, go to Philippians chapter 1. Look at verse 1. We're going to just read a little bit about Paul. This is, this is awesome. 
This letter is from Paul and Timothy. They were both slaves of Christ Jesus. You know, if you think about it, what's a slave? And somebody that's, yeah, they just do what they have to do. They're slave. Why? We were slaves to the devil at one point. We did whatever the devil wanted us to do and our flesh followed it. What they're trying to tell us here, we're slaves to righteousness. We're slaves to Jesus Christ. Even when we want to do the wrong thing, we do the right thing because we're slaves to righteousness. Amen. I, my flesh wants to do wrong. But I'm a slave to Jesus now. I have to do right. It's the same. It's the, and you know how you had it when your sinful nature takes over, how you have to do it? Well, this is when the Holy Spirit takes over. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. This is what maturity is all about. I have to do the right thing, even though my flesh don't want to. Mm -hmm. My flesh is telling me what to do, but my heart is telling my spirit, saying, no, take one like Jesus took one. Mm -hmm. Leave yeah. it in God's hands. Yeah. Are you a slave to Christ Jesus? Are you still a slave to your flesh? That just shows you if you have grown or not. That's right. If your flesh keeps taking over, you're still a slave to your flesh. If your spirit comes taking over, you know you're a slave to Jesus. But that's a process and it takes time and you have yeah. to put the bat away when you fail. Not if, when. Yeah. I'm a work in progress. Yeah. I happen to be staying on the cross a lot longer than I used to. <laughs> and it hurts. You know, you know, crucifixion is a long, suffocating process. If you if you do the science, what happens at that point? Yeah. You can't breathe, and you have to lift yourself up. Yeah. It's the same thing when our flesh gets crucified. It's like. <laughs> 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 Can I get an amen for that? Amen. amen. Because it's like there are times in our lives, and you know it, that we have success where we actually don't say what we want to say. And that's a victory, thank amen. God, because there were times we could never do that. That's right. <sighs> I'm getting suffocated. You know what I'm saying? Let the Spirit breathe the life into you. Now look what it says. I'm writing to all of God's holy people in Philippi. Well, he's writing to all God's people in Anchor tonight. Because once I start reading this, it's God taking over. Who belongs to Christ Jesus, including the elders and deacons. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Paul always compliments with grace and peace. Yeah. If you ever have to confront somebody, always season it with a little salt. Always tell them something good first. Say, I really admire your walk. I see how you're hanging in there. But. <laughs> this is a little bit off. You know, one thing about Christians, they're so afraid to confront each other, with, to, to let each other grow. And Christians are so immature that they get offended. Mm -hmm. Why would you get offended when you don't, you don't, when somebody's seeing something in you that you can't see in yourself? Mm. The Word of God offends us. And God will use people. You know, Moses used that dude, Hobab. You know, if you're reading the Old Testament, mm. he knew the mountains in and out. And, and Moses said, We need you. To help us navigate through this foreign, these foreign countries. And he says, no, I won't do it. i got to go on my family. Mm -hmm. We're going to bless you if you help us. And he mm -hmm. ended up helping them. Mm -hmm. So don't think, that God uses it. Listen, God uses all things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you won't help someone else or correct them, God will use a whole bab out there. Or he'll use that little, little guy that was kicking sand in David's face. Because nobody could confront him what he did. Right. Why? Because he loves us. And if you get offended, eh, wrong answer. You should be saying thank you mm -hmm. if you're a mature Christian. Mm -hmm. right? 
How much growing up do we have to do? A lot! Mm -hmm. Thank God we can come here and learn about these things. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, you know what? I ain't, I ain't far along as I think I am. I was just a jerk today. I just reacted. What about you? And this, I, Somebody can try to tell me something about me and I could not accept it. The Bible is good medicine for us. And so are God's people with the right motive. Where's the zippers? <laughs> I can't. No, it's funny because I came in and I heard right away. I said, oh. Of course the devil's in here. He ain't going nowhere. He's always going to be in God's house. Trying to walk. Pick off. Pick off. Mm -hmm. Pick off. And let the flesh, let the flesh what ruin the spiritual life that we're all trying to gain and our family ties together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't let it happen. Yeah. We're building God's kingdom here. Mm -hmm. Make allowances for each other's faults because of your 1 Corinthians 13 kind of love. Mm -hmm. yeah. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous, nor boastful, nor proud, or rude. It does not demand its own land. And willing to, yeah, whatever. It's not irritable. See? How much are you retaining? Are you retaining that when you really need to, though? Are you using it? You can retain it, and you can put it in your head, but are you using it when that time comes? I love you, Zul. And I know I need it. That's why I need, I need to get hit in the head with that 1 Corinthians 13 love, because... My kind of love ain't patient, ain't kind, ain't willing to yield to others. It's a selfish kind of love. In your flesh. In the flesh, exactly. And our flesh is still strong, obviously. Mm -hmm. But we're getting closer. Amen. Look what it says. Look at verse 3. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. Look what he says. Apostle Paul. Whenever he prays, I make my requests for all of you with joy. Amen. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And look what he says in verse 6. I love this. Okay. He says, I am certain, I am definitely convinced that God who began the good work in you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus, when Christ Jesus returns. Amen? Amen. So God, God began the work in you, okay? And he's going to finish the work in you. Amen. And the way he does that is by crucifying your flesh. Now look what it says. So it is right that I should feel I do as, as I do about you, for you have a special place in my heart. Paul had a heart, boy. He had a heart for all the people that he was helping and that he taught. You share with me the special favor of God, both in my imprisonment and in defending and confirming the truth of the good news. So Paul was in prison when he wrote this stuff, and he's still singing praises and glories to God. Now look. Maybe you're not in prison, but God might have you in a difficult place right now. Are you still giving praises and glory to God? Amen. For where he has you. Yep. Always thanking the Father. Or are you miserable? Flesh, miserable, spirit, willing, and yielding. Amen. Now look what it says. God, look at verse 8. God knows how much I love you and long for you with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. Look at the other prayer he prays. You want to know how to pray? Look what he says. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters. This whole thing that we're doing he wants us to understand what really matters in everything. Look what he says. 
so that you may live what? Pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation. Now, what, is my, what kind of fruit is my salvation supposed to produce? Here it is. The righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. Amen. And the way he gets the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ is by crucifying your flesh. Mm -hmm. Just being real with you. Amen. You're, you're under this ministry. You know, have a lot of information. You have a lot of knowledge. And you have a lot of understanding of what the plan really is. Amen? Amen. Amen. And if you keep coming, it's going to happen, and the crucifixion is going to get hotter. But it's for a reason. Because after the, after the death is the resurrection right. of the new life. Amen. But as long as you keep that old life alive, you'll never experience the new life here. God loves us. Now look at this. Now, the righteous character producing life, for this will bring much glory and praise to who? Myself. Look how good a Christian I am. No. No, that's not why he does it. He does it for who? Much glory and praise to who? God. Because you can't produce what God can produce in you. That's why it's a supernatural thing that he's the one who does the work in you. You can't do it. Amen. Or else you wouldn't need Jesus. Amen. That's a fact. Amen. And one of the part of struggles with the Christian life as we live in a world is that we try to, like, take over. And okay, now I'm going to do this. No. And you're not going to do it. The more you try, the more you will fail. Because you won't let God do it at His time and His speed. You want to get ahead of God because we live in an instant world. There's no such thing as instant spiritual growth. That's right. You know like when the kid, there was a little illustration where you go against the wall, and you look and see how far you've grown. Mm -hmm. Some years, you, didn't, you know, you didn't grow as much. Some years you did a big jump. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the Christian walk. Mm -hmm. Some seasons you get great growth and understanding, and some seasons you find yourself in a dry desert place where I don't figure, I can't figure nothing out. I don't want to read the Bible. I don't even want to pray. I don't understand what's going on. It's part of the trip, so don't get discouraged. Yeah. It's part of the journey. How do I know? Because I'm on the same one. Yeah. God takes me through it so I can, I can let you know that it's okay if you feel like I'm not praying, I'm not opening my Bible, this, that, and the other thing, because God's just bringing you to the end of yourself again, saying, okay, where else am I going to go? Remember when it got hard? Jesus asked all his disciples, you're going to eat my flesh and drink my blood, and everything they're saying, this is too much, I can't understand this, and he started walking away, because it got hard. And Jesus said to the apostles, are you going to turn, Peter, you gonna, you gonna, you going to go too? Peter says, where are we going to go? You alone have the world. What, what are you going to do? Close this and go back to hell again? Because this is the, he has the words to give eternal life. As hard as it might seem, it ain't going to be as hard as it is going back there. If you remember why you came 